Yeah, I believe like really strongly that nothing can transform a community like a green space. Um, especially in urban areas, we do not have a lot of green space in New York City. So green spaces become this magical place that bring people together, that bring um, nature, you know, birds and bees and all kinds of insects together where laughter happens and learning happens. And the farm is that place in the community. We're in a very dense city block. We're next to a liquor store and a tobacco shop. We're like sandwiched in the middle of, of both. Um, and we're an outdoor classroom. We're a place where both children and adults can come and learn, um, where folks get to see plants growing in water, where kids can come to a farm in New York City with, with animals growing, with fish, you know. They come in and want to see the horses. But, um, <laughs> but and, and what do you tell them? You're not that kind of farmer. They're like, yeah, no. <laughs> we have fish, though. And they're like, oh, yeah. And they get to interact with fish and they get to learn that fish can think and that they are intelligent and they like to play and that they recognize people and they talk about what fish need to survive and what humans need to survive and if there are any commonalities between the two. Um, we talk about plants and how plants grow and why plants can grow and why are there so many um, insects? I'm like, well, because we have water and pollinators like water and birds like water. And we also have a place that attracts that. And then for adults, you know, a lot of adults come there to learn aquaponics, but they leave with just having this place where they get to center themselves and they get to slow down and they get to um, be in nature in a way that you don't get the opportunity to when you live in a city, especially in New York City where everything is like fast paced, you know, and you get to come to this place and slow down and literally the rest of the world goes away. And all that matters are these like plants that become your teachers, honestly, you know, like we're there to learn from um, these plants and the animals that we're raising. And, you know, so it, it's become this place where, not only is it a place where children come to learn and engage with nature, but it's also a space where adults come to learn and engage with themselves and get to slow down and get to find peace. And that's the beauty of, of nature and the beauty of green spaces, um, not just in an urban environment, anywhere, but especially in an urban environment. So many people say, I keep coming back because this is so peaceful. I love doing this. It gives me so much peace or I'm learning this thing about myself that I didn't recognize or know about myself, which is so beautiful, you know? Uh, you come in to like learn how to grow vegetables and then you leave learning so much about who you are as a person. So it, it's a really wonderful thing. And I, I'm not, it's not unique to that farm. It is just unique to um, that type of space that encourages curiosity and forces people to slow down. Um, there's a sound of water everywhere. You know, when you walk in, it's the first thing you hear is the sound of water. It's really tranquil. And that's just enough to transform anyone. You know, you come in, rushed off the subway, <laughs> and then you come into a place and you just get to, like, relax and engage with nature. And that's really... Um, the beauty of green spaces in communities, you know, and especially in urban environments where we don't get to engage with nature um, as much as um, folks who live in rural or suburban areas get to be. So an, an urban farm is so much more than a place that grows food to nurture, you know, people's bodies. You're also nurturing souls and nurturing minds. I think, yeah. I'll, if I'm a science teacher, I'm not going to lie, if I'm a science teacher or if I'm a principal or a superintendent watching this, like, I'd be hyped. I'd be thinking, like, all right, if I'm not in Brooklyn, number one, either how do I get connected with a resource incorporated with you or how can I use this right now either in my classroom in the future or right now through distance learning? What, what tips or advice would you give? Because if I'm listening to this, I'm thinking as a teacher, all right, how can I use what you're doing and use it for my kids right now? or in two months when we're back at school and hopefully life is back to normal. Like what advice would you give 
maybe simple things that we can do at home that we can obviously through distance learning or a Zoom call or whatever, what, what advice would you give or tips could you give us when we really don't know where to start? Um, there's so many different places where you can start. On one level, it's just, you know, start growing with your kids. Get some seeds. Look in your cabinet. Do you have beans? <laughs> Do you have like some dry beans? Soak those beans, you know, and, and watch them sprout. That alone is transformative um, for children. And why are they sprouting? And what is a sprout? You know, what else can we sprout? Go through your cabinet and sprout everything. <laughs> I dig that because that's not only is that like, that, that can raise so many other questions and you can do all kinds of writing stuff with that. That's great. I love it. Exactly. And what is a seed, right? Then you get down to like, what is a seed? And we eat seeds. These are seeds. Why do we eat them? You know, what other types of seeds do we eat? And that, that leads you down a rabbit hole of there's so much science to explore there. Um, and where do you find seeds? Some seeds are in a fruit and some seeds are, you know, not in a fruit. Like, where, where are all the different places you find? You know, what is a fruit? <laughs> you know, and you start, like, going, answering these questions. And what does it take to grow something, you know, um, and then going on to another level, if you want to explore aquaponics more, um, I shared with you guys a DIY aquaponics video that shows you how to create an aquaponics system using um, a five-gallon water jug, um, and it's just a great, it's a beautiful way to teach children about ecosystems. You know, you're bringing, how do you, what is an ecosystem? Why does it matter that these living uh, things live together and work together? When um, we work with elementary schools, we talk so much about what is an ecosystem and why does it matter? A school is an ecosystem. If you take the students out of the school, is it a school? <laughs> I dig that's a huge conversation where you can connect science with their real life. I dig it's authentic and relevant. Yeah, so that those are little, so we, and we're going to have on our website, ocofarms.org, even more resources for teachers. Um, so not only can you build a small system with your students in a classroom, it's so easy. You can also watch with your students and learn. Children can learn about um, raising animals. Our students in New York City um, are learning humane ways of treating animals through the fish that they're raising in the classrooms, right? We had an incident once where we brought some crawfish into a classroom and the teacher found the, uh, the crawfish on the floor below. <laughs> and we had to have a conversation about that, you know, and tie that conversation to what's happening to animals and nature worldwide. Why is it important to take to take care of animals? What are the characteristics of, you know, these fish? They are living, do they feel pain? You know, do they think, do they eat? Like you start going into, so there's so many ways of tying science into this. Like what do these guys need to live and survive? And how, what is your responsibility to make sure that they live and survive? And you're also taking care of plants. You know, so there's so many, uh, there's simple ways to do this that is not very expensive, but there's so many different um, explorations for a science teacher, and there are also explorations even for vocabulary and math, um, you know. Um, I think I shared with you uh, not too long ago that we started our own garden in the back, and one of my favorite lessons um, out of the classroom with my family was one on regrowth, right? And how can you take something that you might otherwise waste, right? Like the waste or byproduct of, you know, your, your food that you're just about to throw away and actually transform that before, as something is rotting, right? Mm -hmm. Transform that into something that can grow. And, you know, Rochelle, I, I know that you and I, again, have, have talked a little bit about that and, and your relationship with any of your students and, you know, kind of looking into inspiring and regrowing, right, and reconnecting with your students is one of your favorite things um, right. that you also miss so much from, from the live classroom, right? Yeah, so, definitely. Can you tell us a little bit about, I, I love this idea of regrowth, right? Because you reconnect, right? You are 
transforming something that was about to be wasted, right? And and on this whole lifelong journey or this idea of learning forever with my kids, there's there's a reset often, right? And you can restart. And it's it's been one of my favorite lessons of the garden or of growing, right? Um, I'm going to use that to actually invite each of you. Um, Yemi, we usually do this lightning round um, towards the end of our session. And I would like for you to share your favorite lesson if, of the garden, right? And or your favorite thing to grow. And if you're not a grower, and for anyone that's that, that's in the chat, you can just kind of like, there are some ideas in there. What do you aspire to grow? So we'll kick it off with you, Yemi. I'm really curious, your favorite lesson and your favorite thing to grow. Wow. Okay. I think my favorite lesson um, is how necessary water is for life and how um, water really ties everything. You know, a few years ago, I would never think that I could grow things in water and I'm growing so much in water. Um, so just how beautiful water is and how water is necessary for life, period, um, and how it should be really taken care of and we need to do a better job uh, of, of treating water like the, the resource <laughs> that it is. Um, my favorite thing to grow, I'm really into growing grains right now. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Not even explore grain. that. I'll be yeah. sure to check in with you and get all the tips. <laughs> grains seems like super ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> but so easy, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fear nothing. We're, we're going to be furious with this. Um, Michelle, what is one of your favorite lessons or even metaphors for a lesson? Um, you know, as Amy was talking before, I was thinking back to just like years and years ago when I was a kid and how many meaningful experiences I've had just doing things out in nature. And so two things come to mind. The one that, that comes to mind the most is growing up, uh, my grandparents had a farm and so like 6 a.m. I was out there picking strawberries or going riding the my grandfather's tractor and like seeing potatoes and watermelons, you name it. Like they had all of these fruits and vegetables. And um, that, it was just such a unique learning experience for me. And so I still to this day remember, you know, the smells and that experience of like digging the potatoes or, or all of that. And so that definitely comes to mind. I haven't had an opportunity to grow anything like that since. But in my kitchen, there is uh, a little plant on, on the windowsill that whenever we moved into the house 20 years ago now was a gift from the prior owners. And that plant is still there. And I just, I look at it and I think, oh my gosh, it's been 20 years. Like I've been caring for this plant. And so there were times where I was, I was not sure that the plant was going to continue, but it's still there. And um, yeah, just the memories that we connect with, like the hands-on learning and the, you know, just all of it, it just helps us to keep growing and uh, sometimes just work through challenges too. That's the space we need to kind of like rejuvenate. Love it. And your favorite thing to grow or that you aspire to grow? Um, I'm going to have to say like probably the strawberries again, because that are tomatoes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Strawberry <Right>. fan. <laughs> Love it. Okay, Jonathan. All right, I've always been an outside boy, so I've been outside my whole life. I think my dad had me climbing mountains when I was seven years old, <laughs> uh, but I never really had a green thumb. You know, I was never really a planner. If I could grow anything, it could be a money tree. How about that? But, uh, you know, what? my biggest thing is I remember um, I have two daughters. I have a three-year-old and a seven-year-old, and um, one of the things that I love is just going outside and when we do, you know, our gardening work and we're, and we're planting flowers and stuff and just seeing her eyes kind of, like, light up about being outside, especially now with kids, they're so like locked inside and video games and screen time, you know, and, uh, and she does some of that too, but when she's planting flowers with me and getting muddy and getting dirty and she's like, oh, this is cool. Oh, there's bugs. I think I talked one time about how she was picking up worms and all that kind of stuff. And her mom was like, what? But you know, here's a seven year old girl getting dirty, having a good time and experiencing what nature is all about. And I think that's the cool thing about being outside and whether it's growing things or planting things like, 
you're experiencing life in a whole new way and you kind of have this like love and, and admiration for the environment in a way that you didn't have before if you're outside just getting involved in it. And I think that's the cool thing about what you're talking about today. I mean, if we can bring that into the classroom and, and how you said like, you know, this conversation around with kids, just kind of loving on the environment a little bit more and getting this like love of science and love of, of nature when maybe they really weren't exposed to it much. You know what I mean? So I think that's, I think that's a big thing and very cool.